What do you get when a beagle and a pug has a kid? You get a puggle, you notice? The ears from the beagle and the face from the pug. Anyways, in this video, we'll be taking, we'll be talking about uh, the kidney function. So the overall function and specifically focusing on the glomerulus, okay? Other videos will be dedicated to the rest of the nephron, but for now, we're just talking about the glomerulus specifically. So first of all, here we have Johnny Depp, or actually Captain Jack Sparrow, and he's going to be our model for this video because he's interesting, he's famous, and if people want to know about the inside of anyone, it would be this guy. So here we have the inside of Johnny Depp, or Captain Jack Sparrow. You notice um, it's pretty empty. That's because I only decided to focus on the kidney, okay, just so you don't get confused with everything else. So here we have the kidney. Each person has two kidneys, okay? And it's kind of located in the in your abdomen at the back. So when you when you feel with your fingers, your back, the lower back, that's approximately where your kidneys are, okay? So that's why sometimes when you have back pain, it could be because of your kidneys. Now, what does the kidney do in a nutshell? Just vaguely, let's get into it. Here we have a filter, okay? Normally, when we put things into a filter, it organizes it by size, right? Now, the kidney is very cool because it can organize things based on good or bad. So, for example, let's pretend this is the kidney. And we put a bunch of stuff in, good and bad. The green represents good, and the red here represents bad. So, let's put it in. What will happen is the kidney, this filter, will let all the bad things pass through. So, but the good things it keeps so the good things cannot pass through so by this logic the kidney keeps the good things inside your body and sends the bad things out okay that's the basic idea so it doesn't sort things necessarily by size but rather by good and bad okay so it's really that simple um but in this video we're going to talk about how exactly that happens we're going to start talking about that okay so to clarify things a little bit because Sometimes people memorize this and then it doesn't make sense. So I'm going to try and get this clear. When we eat food, right, um, it goes into our digestive system and we absorb food through the small intestine and eventually it reaches our bloodstream, right? So this is our bloodstream, this red artery and vein, okay? But specifically, food will enter our arteries. And so this makes our arteries full and um, rich in nutrients. It's got all the oxygen, all the nutrients it needs for our cells to survive, right? Because it essentially will distribute all this blood that is full of nutrients to our cells so we can survive and grow and be healthy. But not everything that we eat um, is healthy or good for us. Some of them are toxic. So it will be in our blood. As well as there being good things, there will also be toxic things. So it's important that our body has a mechanism or a way of getting rid of these toxic things. And so essentially what happens is, say here we have the bloodstream, it flows down, some of, some of the blood will go to our legs, our arms, our head, our heart, whatever. And some of it, um, every cycle, will go into the kidney to make sure that we can remove the bad things. So as this blood here that has both good and bad things goes into this vessel here, this red one, um, it will pass through the kidney and the kidney will put the good things into this blue vessel called your vein because this is still our bloodstream. So it made sure to keep all the good things inside our blood. Okay. Now, the bad things will be put into this thing here called the ureter. The ureter will carry this bad things down into our bladder so we can pee it out just like that. Get rid of all the bad things. So the blue color here, this vein, kind of represents the... Um, the blood that has been cleared of toxic things, has been cleared of bad things, whereas the artery here kind of represents having good and bad things in it, okay? So that is, again, the main function of our kidney. Now let's look a slight bit more detailed. So I'm not gonna focus on explaining this structure because I did that in a previous video, but if we zoom into the kidney here, okay, um, we can, and we cut it open, so we slice right through the center, we can see this structure. Okay, and you notice the first thing is this renal artery. That's this little branch here that we can see that comes from the big that comes from the big artery, right? Now, this one, as you notice, splits off. 
you can see it it makes little branches until it gets the branches get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until they're here super tiny okay now when and you can notice then these arteries then transform into um, veins so all the good things are kept so as the as so basically the blood that has it has both good and bad things in splits off until very small and then all the good things are transferred to the blue vessel and all the bad things are transferred somewhere else which I'll say now so all the good things in the red artery is transferred to the to the blue vein and then they collect and drain into here the renal vein which will which will then drain into this big vessel and stay in your body so this way all the good things are kept all the bad things or the toxic things um, instead of going into this blue vessel as the good things did will transfer into this space here and then it will transfer into this space here and then into this ureter here okay and we know this ureter is this thing here that travels down to our bladder so we can pee it out so what we learned from this image is that it happens the process of removing good things like of keeping good things and removing bad things happens around here where the vessels are at their smallest okay so now it doesn't just happen by magic right something must do it so how does it happen so that's what we're going to talk about now the ultimate machine or the unit that actually makes that happen is this this right here you must have maybe you haven't seen the structure before but this little machine or structure is called a nephron and it is located around this area between the cortex and the medulla okay so it's like he it's like right here and we have around 1 million of them this is our filter this is the thing that does the filtering um, so since we have a million we know that they're super tiny so this is an over exaggerated image I'm just trying to make it understandable it's not actually this big it's super tiny now now the main question is how how does it do it so as we know this artery has both good and bad things in right so it branches until it gets super small so the tiniest artery that still has good and bad things in it will will as you see there this red vessel will enter the nephron so i'll show it more clearly here that smallest vessel so the smallest branch will go in to this nephron just like this it goes in and then um there will be a branch that exits so after it enters it also exits okay so that's important so as it enters something will happen here okay and and then so i'll get into this a bit more clearly now so hopefully you get this concept of of the nephron okay so it is located there between the cortex and the medulla and this is the filtering unit and we're going to talk about now how exactly it works so here's the structure again because over the next few videos i'll be talking about each of these segments individually so we're going to talk today about this segment here. How, what happens here when the um, both the good and the bad things enter the glomerul the, the the nephron? Um, so this is the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. We're talking about this. Then after that we have the proximal convoluted tube, the loop of Henle, and the distal convoluted tube. Finally, the collecting tube. Okay, this is the full structure of the nephron. So now now let's get into how it works. So essentially what happens is we have here, so we're focusing on this part, okay? Remember, so here I zoomed into that part. So what we have is, like I mentioned before many times, we have the arterial branched very small with the good and bad things in. The green is the good things and this other color is the bad things, okay? I didn't want to make the other things red, otherwise you just can't see them. So we know the blood comes in smallest branch and goes into this little pathway and, and it coils and it comes out again through the efferent arterial so the one coming in with the blood is afferent and the one going out is efferent how can we remember this so pro tip for you afferent a for approach it's approaching the nephron okay and afferent e for exit it exits the nephron so we know as i mentioned before that the purpose of the kidney is to remove the good, th uh, remove the bad things, and keep the good things in our body. Okay, so let's see what happens then. This is stage one. So it goes in. Here's our blood, the good and the bad things, and it travels here, and then it reaches this space in the glomerulus. So the glomerulus is pretty much just a name given to this uh, 
this mix of this like bundle of capillaries okay now the trick here is the glomerulus is different from this vessel and this vessel it is permeable meaning it has little holes in it allowing things to pass out of it so when the blood comes with all the molecules that are good and bad it allows things to pass out of it so the vessel here is permeable okay unlike the vessel here and here things are not allowed to pass out of these of this um, artery or this artery only here this is a special bit of capillary called the glomerulus so basically let's pretend this one this is a bad one okay it travels blah 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 and it gets to this small segment here okay and now it's permeable remember the glomerulus so this thing might be able to pass out but it needs to cross three layers so i'm going to show you see the three layers the vessel itself it needs to go out of the vessel and then it needs to go through this green layer and then through this blue layer and if it passes all those three things then it entered this space okay called the bowman's capsule or the bowman space okay after it entered this space it can then enter the proximal convoluted tube the first green part okay so let me zoom in so we're zooming in now this part you see the red layer okay it's called uh, this is the layer of the capillary so the vessel is holding the blood right it needs to get out of that vessel first and this vessel is special as i just mentioned because it has fenestrations it has small holes then the second layer is this um, green layer called the basement membrane this one has much smaller holes okay so even though some things could pass the capillary it may not be able to pass the basement membrane and then the last one is the podocytes that's this blue thing blue layer it also has big holes so let's look at this molecule so we zoomed in here now we're looking here let's take this molecule and pretend now we're in the vessel here okay and it's got to pass these three layers to get into this space which is this space which is this space okay so do you think this molecule can pass it's a bad molecule so do you think it's going to pass out of the blood let's see so it goes oh it fits there and it fits through there as well okay it ha happens to be just the right size so it can pass through all three layers so now it's in here so we were so right now i showed you an example of how we managed to remove a bad thing from the blood okay it's removed that's what we want right we want to keep the good things and remove the bad things now let's use this one let's see what happens to this molecule it moves and it gets here now so now it's in this space and do you think it will pass this these three layers well if it's in the right position technically it can pass so that's confusing now because now we remove something bad from the something good from the blood hmm that doesn't make sense does it because we now i thought the purpose of the nephron was to remove only bad things and keep good things so that's where the nephron gets a bit complicated the first stage the glomer with the glomerulus it this stage is simply a size filter it works like a normal filter it removes things by size so everything small can pass through good or bad okay so for example here we have a bad thing another bad thing and it's also the appropriate size to pass through so it can also get there and here's a good thing it moves it's very small it can also pass through so it also goes into here but here we have some big things so this one let's see if this one can pass through it's a bad one um first layer yes but no way second layer so this one stays in the blood so it's going to move out in the blood now we have this one a good one um and we know we want to and see see that's also confusing because this bad thing is now kept in the blood i thought we want to get rid of bad things now this good one this one is big um and it can also not pass so it's going to stay in the blood so this is a so this is one good thing we managed to keep the good thing and get rid of some bad things but also some good things so now you might be thinking okay that's bad because now we're going to get rid of good things um as well as bad things but let me tell you later on in the future videos we'll learn how despite the fact that these bad things were filtered later on in this stage so for example say this good things get filtered they can also be reabsorbed back into the blood because notice um these this this artery leaves right but it moves around like this so it moves around kind of here next to this part so if good things manage to get into the to the proximal tube or they get filtered there's a there's a they will be reabsorbed they will be taken back into the bloodstream out of the nephron but bad things will stay inside the nephron and eventually these bad things will travel through the whole circuit and reach the end 
And if they reach the end, it means, what does it mean? It means that they will go into this space and then this space and then out through the urine, okay? So the key thing I want you to understand from this is that the first stage in filtering um, by the glomerulus only separates things by size. All the small things will pass and none of the big things will pass. Doesn't matter if the things are good or bad, okay? But the later on, later on the glomerulus, it, we will make sure that all the good things that were passed will be taken back into the blood because we may need them, okay? So I hope this makes sense so far for you. Um, now, one more key thing. So why did I make the afferent arterial? So the arterial going into the glomerulus, bringing all those good and bad things. Why did I make that one so thick and the efferent one so thin? There was a reason for that. So the reason is, so imagine a long hose pipe. Do you know what a hose pipe is? It's the thing, the long pipe that has that you turn on and then water passes through it so you can water your plants. So imagine that. And if you don't know what that is, just imagine any long pipe. Now what happens if you squeeze one, one side of the pipe? So you make it smaller, that you make the, the hole smaller. What will happen? The water won't be able to pass so quickly, okay? Because the hole is smaller. So what will happen is the, the stuff inside the pipe will build up. Okay, it will start building up in the center because it can't leave because you're, you're kind of constricting it. So by the same logic, the efferent one is smaller and this allows blood to pool up here in the glomerulus. And if it pools up, it means that it moves more slowly because it's kind of pooling up. So that means all the things inside the blood can be filtered more quickly or more efficiently because if it wasn't like this and they were equal size, then the blood would move like this. So quickly, there's no time for filtering to happen. So it's very important that the efferent one is thinner than the afferent one so that there's time for the filtering to actually happen, okay? Now, last, very last thing. So what are examples of small things that can pass, um, like real small things in your blood? Because these are just images. I'm, I'm going to give you some examples of real things that can pass and some big things that cannot pass, okay? So... Things that can pass need to be smaller than 68,000 molecular weight. This is just a unit of measurement, like kilograms or grams, okay? It's just a unit. Okay, molecules that are less than this heavy can pass. Things like, um, these kind of molecules can include water, salt, glucose, amino acids, small proteins. Water makes sense because we pee water. So if water couldn't pass through here, then we wouldn't be able to pee. Um, glucose doesn't make sense, right? Glucose, amino acids, small proteins, because we want these in our body because we need glucose for energy, amino acid to make proteins. So these can pass, so that's confusing. So that would just be an example of this. Glucose would be an example of a green molecule. It's a molecule that's good, but it can pass. So later on in this process, we'll just reabsorb that and take it back into the bloodstream. So I'll talk about this, this stage later. Um, same with amino acids. Now, what are molecules that we don't want to pass? Okay, red blood cell is one, and large proteins. So we know we have red blood cells. They carry the oxygen to all our cells so we can survive. But imagine if red blood cells were able to pass. So for example, this would basically represent a red blood cell, this one, because it's a good molecule, we need it, and we don't want it to pass because it's too big, so it can't pass. So it's gonna stay inside our blood. But imagine if we were able to, if it was able to pass, that would mean every time we pee, we would pee red because red blood cells are red and we know we don't pee red. If you pee red, it means there's a problem with this system, okay? And you would need some help. So that's one example. So essentially, at the end of the day, this filter is very good because it keeps big molecules that we need inside our body, like red blood cells, like big proteins, and it makes sure that they don't leave our body, okay? But at the end of the day, it's just a size filter, this first part. So we can get some good things filtered as well, which we don't want to leave our body. So later on, we'll reabsorb them. But I'll talk about that stage later. Um, so that is it for this video. Um, one last thing I'd mention if you're interested is, in, interested is small proteins is basically formed. Proteins are formed when amino acids combine together, right? So if a few amino acids bind together, like three or four, that would form a small protein. And so these could still be passed because they're small enough. They, they could still be filtered. But big proteins um, are made up of many amino acids. So they may not be able to pass, okay? Because it may be too big. Last thing here, some keywords, ultrafiltration, the name of this filtering process is called ultrafiltration. Make sure you know this word. This space here um, and this green structure is called the Bowman's capsule. It's like a little 
house for all the things that get filtered to go into before they go into the proximal convoluted tube. And the last one here is filtrate. Whatever passes into this space, so all four of these things passed, they are called filtrate, okay? So filtrate will get ultra, will, all the, all the substances here will do ultra filtration into the Bowman's capsule and they are called filtrate. So I hope this video made sense and check out the next video to see what happens after this stage.